Every week, all across Britain, thousands of happy couples tie the knot. I can't believe it's actually happening. It's just so unreal. The rings! But for some brides and grooms, getting married isn't just a memorable day. <laughs> she may kiss your bride. It's a huge achievement. I had to deal with cancer and then going blind overnight, which was, yeah, it's quite intense. These extraordinary couples. She's the girl of my dreams. I'm really excited about being a husband. Refuse to let adversity stand in their way. I want to do it while I've got hair. The changes that have happened to Will have only made me love him more. So we've been through the uh, sickness and health, haven't we? Yeah, we've done and one vow. Yeah, we've done one vow. As they go to superhuman lengths to make it down the aisle. Let's walk the aisle, shall we? <laughs> no, let's go to the pub. On the happiest day of their lives. Do you think now we're making the invites? Do you think it seems a bit more real? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. 33-year-old sports journalist Will and 25-year-old teacher Amy are putting the finishing touches on the invitations to their wedding. Do you have, like, in your mind, like, a tick list of things leading up to a wedding where, yeah. like, each sort of significant milestone feels like a step closer to it? Yeah, this is definitely a big one, isn't it? Yeah. And we want our wedding to be a homemade... Yeah, more personal wedding, yeah. isn't it? Everything we're doing, we're doing traditional, but with a slight twist. Whose idea was this? I think it was the bride's. Amy has taken over or taken the lead a bit more on the wedding because I'm fairly... I don't want to write myself off and say I'm useless, but I'm not as useful as I could or should be. The couple met four years ago on the most romantic day of the year. We met in Dublin on Valentine's Day and you know, I think it definitely was love at first sight. It was just complete fate and luck that we stumbled yeah. across each other. Yeah. And I remember so clearly the next day my friend who I was with was like, I think you're going to marry him. And I was like, no. And in my head I was thinking, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Nearly 200 miles away in Scunthorpe, another couple are looking forward to tying the knot. Good one of you. Yeah, good on photos, you. 52-year-old <laughs> police detective Ian met his fiancée Karen at work. It's a little bit dark, that one, but do you remember this one? Yeah. yeah. First thing I noticed with Karen was, was her eyes. She had amazing eyes, really blue and sparkly, and, wow. Gorgeous girl as well. Oh. So, uh, yeah, fell in love with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they had been together four years when last spring their lives took a dramatic turn. Karen was going out for a meal with the colleagues and friends. She drove off in a car to give me a kiss and said, I love you. No reason at all to believe that anything was going to go drastically wrong that day. Karen's dashboard camera caught the moment that her life changed forever. Despite hitting the bollard, Karen continues on her way to pick up her work colleague, Nigel. Time had come and gone, and it wasn't like Karen to be late. There's one thing Karen was, she was always um, very punctual and she was always on time. Eventually, I, I heard a car coming and I saw it was Karen. I noticed she'd stalled the car, and she was just sort of looking at me and I thought, you need to come to the end of my driveway at least. She drove to the end of the driveway, which is, I don't know, probably about 20 yards, and stalled it again. I got in the car and I said, are you all right? We, we need to get off. And she just looked at me, sighed, and sort of smiled. What are we doing? <laughs> ah. Thought, I'll, I'll just move the car for her. As I went round and opened the car door, she didn't move. Did you get out? Well, so I took a seatbelt off, and it was at that point when I picked her up, she was, she was just like a dead weight. Nigel rushed her to hospital. At the age of 46, Karen had suffered a stroke. I remember 
Being in the emergency room where Karen was on this stretcher bed, she just looked so helpless, just lying there. It broke my heart to see her like that. I knew the stroke was serious. So, yeah, I was, I was being pretty fearful for the future, for, for mine and Karen's future together. Thought I might lose her. And that was difficult for me to comprehend. I just found you. Oh. Didn't want to lose you so soon. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know now. Mm -hmm. oh. you a cup of tea, Karen? Yeah. yeah. One year on, Karen is one of the 1.2 million stroke survivors in the UK. With Ian's help, she has made a good recovery, but it's left her with a speech disorder called aphasia. There you go. Yeah, it's cute. It affects one in three stroke survivors, and sufferers often struggle to find the right words and construct sentences. What do you want to do today, then? I'm going to talk to... Charlie? Yeah. I'm going to take him to the beach? Yeah. Yeah? For Karen, she knows what she wants to say, but can't always verbalise it. And what's that like for you, Karen, when the wrong words do come out? I don't know. It's frustrating for yeah. you. Yeah, frustrating. You're perfectly compass mentors, aren't you? And you know exactly what what's going on. You understand everything. It's just getting the words out, isn't it, really? Yeah. Finding the right words is hard for Karen, but on the 5th of December 2015, it was Ian who found himself needing to say exactly the right thing. I proposed to Karen on her birthday last year, which was obviously after a stroke. Just thought, life's too short. I love Karen and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. So, uh, hmm. thought, let's get married. Hmm. The expression on her face, I could see she was elated. I think she did say yes or something like that. It was about one of the strongest words she says. <laughs> Some people would probably run a mile from Karen's condition. I'd never do that. Down to someone else. You thought I'd find somebody else? Yeah. Oh, didn't want anybody else. Oh, really? Really, I don't want anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Cheltenham lovebirds Will and Amy had only been together 12 months when their relationship was also put to the test. You can't predict that one thing is going to completely change the course of your life. That was just a normal day. On Saturday the 2nd of March 2013, Will was found unconscious on a street in Cheltenham. He'd suffered a bleed on the brain. The only medical explanation they've given me or my family was that I was born with a birthmark on the brain. And throughout all of my life, it was like a ticking time bomb. It was going to go off at some point, and for some reason, just on that day, it just happened to go off. Will was rushed to hospital, and although around half of cases such as his are fatal, emergency surgery saved his life. We were basically told the three outcomes were Will was going to die, Will was never going to leave hospital, or Will was going to be so disabled that his life quality was not really worth it. Thankfully, Will survived and was put in an induced coma to reduce the swelling on his brain. Doctors warned Amy that the outcome was unpredictable and she feared Will's memory may have been affected. Is there a chance? that Will's going to wake up and not remember me. Because I'd only known him for a year, so if he loses a year, I'm gone. But when Will woke up, his first communication was to write, Will Wood loves Amy Perry. Phew! <laughs> he remembers me! And he remembers he loves me! <laughs> so I was like, oh, we're going to be fine. Although Will remembered he loved Amy, as he got back on his feet over the next six months, it became apparent he was having trouble forming new memories. One cup of oats. 
Now three years on, Will's short-term memory is a constant challenge for the couple. Do you have Nutella in porridge? Is that you a... can have Nutella in porridge. There is some Nutella at the back of the fridge. Is there? Yeah. Don't... Don't tease me, woman. <laughs> my memory is annoying. <laughs> because my memory has kind of struggled everything ever since the date of my bleed. So I can remember so much, as Amy would say, useless sporting trivia, trivia from the 90s. I can remember who, who won the 1994 World Cup. But I struggle to take on board new information. When I wake up in the morning, I can remember the, the biggest, most important things, who Amy is, that I've had a brain injury, what I do for a living. But I struggle to remember the evening before or the day before, for example. There was one time where I, um, I couldn't remember if I'd cleaned my teeth that day or not, so I just went back and did it just in case. And then I couldn't remember if I'd done it the second time. So every time I did it, it felt like it was the first time. It, and Amy tells me I ended up brushing my teeth eight times in a day, which trying to look at the positives of it meant that my teeth would have been very clean. Forgetting that he's already brushed his teeth may make for a sparkling smile, but there's one special moment the couple are keen Will doesn't forget. Do you remember, Will? I remember it was on a beach. <laughs> so it was just... So you come... We walk down the zigzag path. Yeah. It, it doesn't have, like, a concrete image in my head that I can, I can grab or pull. I, like, I know it's happened, and I've been told a lot about it, and we've even got a, a photo, haven't we? Of that we got a frame, the canvas of the of the proposal. Like, that's proof. It's, it's there and it's happened. It's happened. <laughs> I knew what my answer was going to be straight away. I knew that I loved Will. I knew that we were strong enough to get through anything, because we already had. <laughs> so, no, there's no question. There's no doubt. Yes. <laughs> it says, I love Amy. With Will's memory of the proposal a little hazy, the couple's big challenge now is to find ways to help him remember the most important day of his life. I think it's going to be difficult to remember much of my wedding day. I think I'll wake up the next day and what will be helpful is having an external aid like a wedding ring and looking down at my wedding ring or looking down at my wedding finger and seeing it on there and thinking, oh, I am married. So what are your hopes for our wedding day? I just really want you to remember saying I do. <laughs> <laughs>
hundreds. Yeah, so you know, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. It mean the world to me if Karen could say her own wedding vows on the day. We'll probably keep the vows fairly simple. Yeah. Um, but she'd be happy with it, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. We'd look at those early, didn't we? Those examples and yeah. she picked out the ones, one that she wanted, which was the shortest one, I think. But <laughs> it means you don't have to speak too much, yeah. doesn't it, really? Yeah. How are you feeling about being my wife? Freaking all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> that good? Yeah. In Cheltenham, groom-to-be Will has recently returned to work as a sports journalist. Today, he's covering a rugby match. No, I need to get your coat. Where's my coat? In the spare room. But to remember the details, he relies on notes he wrote to himself the night before. Matson versus Whitehall. I'm covering maybe getting the trophy for the title. 550 words for match report plus quote speech. See you later. Love you. <laughs> There's a short walk from our flat to the train station, then train from Cheltenham over to Gloucester, and then walking from Gloucester train station to Matson Rugby Club. Travelling is hard for Will, because even a journey he's done before feels like he's doing it for the first time. Is this one definitely to Gloucester? Gloucester train, yeah. Gloucester, yes. Gloucester. This makes Will an anxious traveller, and he constantly checks his location on his phone. The main problem is getting lost. <laughs> so Will often gets lost. I'm trying to walk as quickly as possible. Because I thought it was that way, but I must be getting mixed up with another rugby club, because the map is saying it's that way. I started the walk and then just kept looking at my phone and I just realised that I was not going to make it in time for kickoff. so I thought, just, just get a taxi. I feel a lot better, a lot more calmer, a lot more reassured. Are you all right? Yeah, just give me a quick call to say I got to the ground all right. Well, what's incredible is that I can remember my shorthand. And even though I might sometimes struggle to remember this morning or yesterday, for example, I can still remember my shorthand absolutely perfectly, which I just find really bizarre. And it just shows you how the part of my brain that's damaged obviously doesn't control the part that remembers my shorthand. It tends to be anything that's after my injury I struggle to remember, so it's any, any new information. While Will is at work, Amy works on an ingenious idea to help Will remember their wedding day. This is a very special collection of flowers because these are hopefully going to make my um, bouquet on the day. And also, because Will's seen them and Will knows exactly what these are, that will help him remember things on the day. So it should act like a bit of a trigger. It should help Will remember the wedding day. So promotion to next year. Do you think you're ready to take on next next year's division? Yeah, we we come down the year before with 56 points. The uh, the match just finished, and I just did me a uh, player interview, and so I'm just going to head back to the train station and then get the train back. After the game, he probably probably would be able to say the final score, but couldn't give me that much detail really. So yeah, 56 20 it was in the end. So he gets back from the game, writes everything down as quick as possible and then he sends it off and then we can sort of both relax and get on with the Saturday. Back in Scunthorpe, bride-to-be Karen is assembling her A-team and has recruited Ian's daughter Whitney and her niece Alicia to be her bridesmaids. Have you thought of how you'd like your hair yet? Have you got any ideas? Curly? Up? Oh. Curly and up, yeah. We're Karen's voice, really, yeah. in this in this wedding process, because although she can't describe to us, we can ask her questions and we know yeah. what she was like before. I think it's just like the dress, so me and Alicia will help you out with that, and I think you'll know when you see it. You'll know. Yeah, definitely. 
if we've got to do a proud, haven't we? Yeah, we have. For this yeah. wedding. I think we will. Yes, <laughs> I think we will. <laughs> With only four months to the wedding, the girls are having a day out in Leeds to search for Karen's wedding dress. You like that colour? Alright ladies. So who's getting married? Karen? Yeah. Excited? Yeah. Tell me all about it. Tell me about the wedding. What's it going to be like? Okay. Two. I don't know. We're going to go to a registry office, yeah. aren't we? Right. But you are having a nice car, things like that, yeah. so... She so wants... quite formal. It's yeah. going to be a formal type exactly. wedding. Yeah. Let me pull a rail together for you, and then you can just have loads of fun trying on and seeing what you look like in different things. That one's a pretty one. I love the colour of that one. Yeah. And then this one, this is the 15-way yeah. one, you know, with the multi-straps yeah. that you can tie lots of different ways. And then this one, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, like with a little bit one. of bling. It's beautiful and mm. absolutely stunning. Do you like that one, Karen? Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, you saw that outside, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I like, I like that one. one. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I like that. What do you pretty. think? What do you think, Karen? What's, what don't you like about it? What is it that you don't like about it, then? It's hard not. It's what? It's hard not. You don't like anything about it? No. It's your wedding day and it's got to be really, really special to you. You've got to try the dress on and say, oh, God, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so to say you don't like it immediately, I would just dismiss it. I'll just take it off and forget about it. Honestly. Thank you. With no luck on the high street, Karen is running out of time to find her dream dress. Meanwhile, in Cheltenham, Will's wedding is fast approaching. It's exactly three years since his brain injury, and to mark the day, he's written a letter entitled Dear Traumatic Brain Injury. I do not know where you came from or why, but I never want to see or hear from you ever again. You nearly beat me, but I'm still here. You have taken the last three years from me, but I'm still fighting you and standing tall. But it's too easy to be angry at you, my injury. So instead, I would like to thank you for delivering accomplishment and achievement, for delivering strength and courage, but mostly for delivering Amy. For as long as she is in my life, you'll never defeat me. I feel so lucky that the changes that have happened to Will have only made me love him more. Who he's become because of his brain injury, I like even more, I love even more. Would I say that I would maybe want to go back before his brain injury? I don't know, because I think actually it, it has made him the man who he is today, which is a really lovely, brave man. In Scunthorpe, as the wedding gets closer, Ian and Karen practice her vows at every opportunity. Hi. And say your name. Hi. Karen Johnson Dake D. My, my name. Whitney Hudson. <laughs> Not Whitney, am I? <laughs> <laughs> but she is continually confusing Ian's name with his daughter's, Whitney. Don't think you meant Whitney, did you? No. You say my name there. Whitney. Ian. Ian. Whitney. <laughs> Ian Horton. Ian Horton. <laughs> yeah. And with the wedding getting closer, the pressure is on for Karen. Yeah. You got most of the words right, didn't you? Yeah. You're going to have to practice this more, aren't you? To get it on the day. You, you can't marry Whitney. <laughs> In Cheltenham, it's three months until Amy marries her fiancé, Will, and they're doing all they can to help train Will's brain to remember the big day. So I think if we do the test, the shopping test today, okay. 
where you have to remember the first letter of each item and spell a word yeah, out. Yeah, so again. you're going to have to remember five things. Okay, I mean, normally it's only three I can remember, so five is a big thing. Do you think five test. is too much? I'll give it a go. Like I say, the, Maybe the, four? the strategy of spelling out a word might help with it. Mm hmm. Okay. Toothbrush. Bananas, apples, brown flakes. D B A B. T Bab. How do you think you're going to do? I'm quite confident about remembering <laughs> these things. I think it's important to do these tests to measure progress. I think it's a really clear way for Will to know oh, before I could only do one, then I moved to two, then I moved to three. And also, we feel like he's practicing, so he's always using his brain. Apples, bananas, brown flakes. There we go. So that's apples, bananas, brown flakes. Toothbrush. So it was toothbrush, apple, bananas, and the fourth item was another bee. Toothbrush, apple, banana, breakfast. It was breakfast related. Banana, apple. Oh, this is driving me nuts. My lad's help. Getting your breakfast. That's right. Brown flakes! I'm so proud of him. <laughs> He's done really, really well. I wasn't expecting, I thought he was very confident. And I thought, hmm, I don't think he'll get all of it. But he did, he did really well. Definitely shows progress. Apples and bananas in the fruit bowl. The end goal is that he will remember the wedding. So anything that we can do to make it more possible, we'll do. Since suffering a stroke last year, Karen has recovered well, and she's looking forward to marrying Ian in just three months' time. Hi, Karen. Hi, How are you? Oh uh, yeah. All good? good. Yeah, all ready? Yeah. Yeah. Today, Karen is having a break from wedding planning as she heads out with Ingrid from the local Stroke Association. It's really nice to see now that she's getting that independence back and she's able to do these things, you know, and get on the bus herself. To any of us, it's just, you know, you don't think about it. But to Karen, it is a big challenge. How are the wedding vows coming along? Cheer up, well. Oh, no, you have to practice. You've got to do your homework. Although today isn't about practising her vows, it is a chance to practise her speech. So are you going to ask for the coffee? Yeah. OK. And what will you ask for? Uh, one... One... Uh, like a coffee. Yeah. And one... Cup of tea. Very yeah. good. So we'll practice again when we get a bit closer? Yeah. So we don't forget? Yeah. Oh, are you talking about you today? Yeah. Karen? Can I have a gelatte? No, of course. It's a regular large. Where did you get there? Yeah. Yeah. And how about you? Um, tea. Tea. Yeah, that's brilliant. In Cheltenham, Amy and her dad are practising a song they've written especially for the wedding. Is it that? Yeah. You're gone and joy. You're gone and joy. You're gone and joy. I'll swim through the crashing waves. With the big day getting nearer, it's also a chance to get some extra help with the wedding plans from Mum. It's hard planning a wedding. Mm someone who doesn't remember what we've planned already. <laughs> we've got the church, we've got the reception, we've got the band in the evening. <laughs> we also need to work out where Will is going to stay the night before. Yes, because when he <laughs> wakes up in the morning, he needs to remember it's his wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's difficult to plan a wedding because I struggle to remember what we want to do. There's a million tiny details that go into a wedding, invitations, bands, flowers, dresses, suits, and then it's remembering conversations that me and Amy have discussed and, and had ourselves at home, or, or that I remember that I like something, for example. Yeah, first of all, was a Finding a suit for his wedding day could throw up a few more challenges, but Will's best man, Nick, is on hand to help. We're looking for wedding suits. OK. Is it just for yourself, or is it 
Just two. Yeah. And then anyone else? I can't remember. I can't remember how many you have in there. You got ushers? Your dad? Brother? I don't think I've got ushers. Yeah. You can see yourself standing at the top there in that. So practice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like an altar. <laughs> 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 look, look nervous. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be Amy. I'm not marrying you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to kiss. <laughs> and it's nice to kind of, every time I look in the mirror, just thinking, oh, this might be the suit I get married in, which is really exciting. I guess what I'm most excited about the wedding and getting married is... As long as she shows up on the day, that's the most important thing. I always feel like I've kind of been a bit of a burden to her with my whole brain injury. You do often kind of think, well, why would she show up on the day? You know, after everything I've put her through. Nice. It's better than I'd remember it. I know. <laughs> While Will searches for his suit, in Scunthorpe, Karen has had success finding her all-important wedding dress. So where did you buy this from? From the internet. And did you do this yourself, or did yeah. you have help with some from someone? No. By yourself? Yeah. yeah. And you're OK putting the numbers yeah. in? Yeah. Is that a big step for you? Yeah. And what does it give you? Dunno. Don't remind me that I can do it. Yeah. How does it feel now you've actually got your wedding yeah. dress? Amazing. Yeah. Have you shown this to Ian? No. no. So is this going to be kept a secret? Yeah. yeah. The huge achievement of buying her own dress has given Karen newfound confidence for the big day. I can't wait. What does Ian mean to you? Love and life. Yeah. Love and life. Jeez. <laughs> Will's gone from wedding suits to wetsuits on an action-packed stag do in Brighton. That's it. Nice one. OK, let your feet come on. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of stags who haven't had gone through Will. Will's gone through, won't remember their stag do's anyway for different reasons. While not remembering their own stag might be common for most grooms, Will's hoping he remembers the big day when he marries Amy in just a few days' time. <laughs> Scunthorpe bride Karen isn't having a hen do, but she is having a hair do. She's visiting Alicia, who's not only her niece and bridesmaid, but also her hairstylist. Today, Karen's coming over and we're going to do a practice for a hair for a wedding. Hiya. Would you like a cup of tea? Please. So, have you got any ideas of how you'd like your hair? Yeah. To the side yeah. now? Yeah. Right, we'll try that today then. Yeah. Since the proposal, she has changed so much. She's so happy. She's getting a bubbly personality back. She's looking forward to the future. What's been the most important thing for you through this last year? Uh, him to propose. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Great. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to about being Ian's wife? <laughs> Be able to tell him what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that OK? Do you, do you like that? What do you think? Oh, wow. 
Hair done. There's time for a quick practice of her vows. Right. Hi, Cameron Johnson, say please. <laughs> Weirdly. No. We, I think we're just going to have to work on on the name. Yeah. Because you've said Whitney a couple of times. Wow. And we need to say Ian. Ian. Yeah. Ian. 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 <laughs> I... He, Karen, Karen John Johnson, take the Whitney. No. I'll be absolutely gutted if she says Whitney, so we're going to definitely make sure she gets that right and says Ian, not Whitney. She'll feel so good about herself if she can. To have and to hope. <laughs> <laughs>
I love it a bit. It's early morning in Poole, and Will and Amy will be exchanging their wedding vows in just two hours' time. Waking up in a hotel room on his own has put Will's memory to the test. I did sort of wake up and think, where am I? <laughs> it did take me a couple of minutes to sort of readjust or reset my mind in a way to think, oh yes, it's, it's my wedding day kind of thing, because I'm trying to sort of take each part of the day step by step. With the wedding starting at 11 a.m., Will's best man is on hand to keep him on schedule. So when are we going to do the tie? We can do it when we get there if you want. Yeah. You sure? We'll do it when we get think, there. Yeah. I think it's just get there. OK. Yeah. Bride-to-be Amy is also watching the clock with her sister and mum. How long have we got? We've got an hour. We've done your hair, we've done your makeup. It's just the dress now, isn't it? Perfect, this. What do you think Will's going to think? I think he's going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Will's likely to be tearful, as his brain injury affects his control over his emotions, especially when it comes to Amy. I could barely even propose, let alone stand there and just watch Amy walk down the aisle. I'm going to lose it big time. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please be upstanding for the bride? It doesn't matter where you go or what you do. I want to spend each moment of the day with you. Oh, little what has happened, I just want to kiss. I never knew that I could be another place. It's great, but it's true. Really very, very warm welcome. So wonderful to be able to celebrate together with Will and with Amy. Who brings this woman to be married? I do. I will take you, Amy, to be my wife. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. And this is my solemn vow. I, Amy, take you, Will, to be my husband, to have and to hold, in sickness and in health, till death do us, us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And this is my solemn vow. And this is my solemn vow. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. couple are holding the reception at the local yacht club, allowing the newlyweds to arrive in style. Right, let's get this party started! Woo! <laughs> Will knew his emotions would be running high, so he's prepared a novel way to deliver his speech. Hi. I had this idea of recording my wedding speech like this, because obviously, as you can tell, I get quite emotional with these things. First of all, I'd like to thank Amy for being there throughout my recovery. Amy, I love you more and more each day. And I'll keep loving you until the end of time. Right, that's it for me. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's Amy's turn to speak from the heart. Will and I are part of an exclusive group. This group is for people whose lives have changed in a single second, where one day had an effect on our lives which rippled beyond us and into our family and friends. We have lived constantly with the effects of that day and our lives have been dictated changed and altered by a speck on our timeline. And that day was Valentine's Day, 2012. Today has been perfect. 
Absolutely perfect. Yeah, today has been absolutely amazing. Better than I could have ever dreamed. Absolutely incredible. Swim through the crashing waves. I'll take my time in the I really hope it's going to be imprinted in my mind that, that everything's going to stay. But I mean, that's why we're asking so many people to film and take photos, because that way we can relive it over and over again.